and aim to control the architecture of our desires. The illusion of choice. The rejection of psychopathology, which doesn't fit with their vision. One aspect of hauntology, of course, is that it's nostalgia for a future that we never had. A future which never came because of late capitalism. A future we were promised by the public information films and the TV, science fiction and horror for children and British television in the 1970s, which often cleaved to stone circles, Roman sites, the work of authors like Nigel Neal, Alan Garner, Peter Dickinson, The Changes Trilogy. Hauntology. We are drawn to the eldritch and the arcane, the strange, the uncanny, the spectral. And yet hauntology is rooted in a particular time and place. Britain in the late 60s and 1970s. Taken out of this context, hauntology ceased to have such a specific, such a valid, such a lasting impression. It's a very subjective thing, but my own feeling is that only people of certain generations understand hauntology. Those of us who are old enough to remember the 60s and 70s. Otherwise, the whole thing descends into a Scarfolk type meme. I hate memes. You cannot look back. You can only look back in hauntology. Nostalgia for a future which never came. We remember the promise of the late 60s and early 70s. The white heat of technology had gone. Labour and unions were powerful. The new liberal welfare state seemed to promise much. And instead, we got Thatcher, globalisation, capitalist realism, Postmodernity. I'm here on Pont de Prith Common, where there's a fake stone circle, a faint, fake, hauntological place. And this was where William Price the Druid, the man who performed the first ever modern cremation in Britain on his son, who was called Yes, he greased, which is Welsh for Jesus Christ. He got into trouble, of course. He's associated with Lantricent. Here in Pont de Prith on the Common, he meant, meant to build a new Druidic palace, which never happened. In the centre, William Price. The rocking stone and the ersatz stone circle of Pont de Prith Common. A fiction, a curated space. As inauthentic as the folk horror films made after the initial folk horrors. The films where people have said, let's make a folk horror film. Let's make something like The Wicker Man. Famous and yet inauthentic. One of the key problems with hauntology is the way that the word is being misused. Already it's being over applied to fake folk horror to ersatz ghost stories. It is related to certain aspects of the uncanny, 
in literature and film. But it's not primarily about those things. It's about late capitalism. Even after a week off work, quite a bit of fresh air, I guess it's still too much sugar and still not enough sleep. I'm still really tired and looking really tired and feeling tired. Not feeling as tired as I was. I'm relaxing a bit, which is good. And I'm in Bristol today, doing some shooting, some psychogeography, some of that theoretical stuff. So we'll see how it turns out. We walk the deserted boulevards. Globalization. It takes manufacturing away and leaves us only bureaucracy. The city more and more as it empties in pandemic and post-pandemic reminds us of the classic figure of the flaneur a key indicator of modernism, the painter of modern life, the solitary walker. As Rousseau said, the reveries of the solitary walker. So it's not as new as it might first appear, but those walks would have been rural rather than urban. Now the urban walk has an attraction all of its own. We see the lifting city rising above us in its austere majesty. How I miss specialist shops with range of books and music. Now everything is identical. Everything is online. Nothing is immediate. One one orders online, there is the satisfaction of the click, click, and then there is a silent drone inside as you wait. I turn a corner, I rub my eyes, I hope the world will last. It's only scant months since I last came this way, and yet already there are many, many buildings that I don't recognise, which are new, that have leapt up where there were once vacant lots. Or perhaps I am just lost in the city. The old city is still all around us, hiding in the shadows of the new. Part of it overgrows, like Fox's cities, like Jeffrey's after London, Wild England, like the drowned world, like all the other catastrophe novels which are not so well known, and yet which are there. The city now resembles more Christopher Priest, the food for a darkening island. As, our, as the demographic shifts, populations change. The Orange Building used to be a pub called the Printer's Devil. As there was a newspaper press very near here. It must have been closed only in the last few years. I always loved the name. The sign now is denuded. You can see IL at the end, the last two letters of Devil. It's a dangerous building now. I once enjoyed a very fine whisky there. Next to it, white brick, glass and steel, crane, church, towers, and a head retail complex. The e-scooter, scourge of the flaneur, meant to be ridden on roads, not pavements, so often not. A green alternative 
to get around the city powered by electricity. Do we see the elderly using them? No. We see young people in their teens and twenties joyriding, young people who could walk, who are fit. So what is the answer to the malaise of capitalist realism? I'll tell you. Let's have a cappuccino and let's go shopping. Capitalism claims to give us endless choice. Instead it tries to tell us what we want. Frozen flowers, a very sexy collection. I prefer to decide for myself. Paths that lead into the past take us back into nostalgia. Nostalgia for that future which has never come. And a longing to return to this pseudo fictive space of our own narratives, our own memories, our own embellishments. <laughs>